y'all. Welcome back to Harmon Homestead. I'm outside today. I've got my egg basket here. Chickens are everywhere. They're laying eggs. They're crowing. It's morning time and we have a special guest here today. Yes. Yes, I felt you rubbing on my legs. Yes, Briscoe. Briscoe. Say, hey, Briscoe. He's got a mean little look, but he's a, just a baby. He's a baby. Him and Bonnie are doing great, guys. They've gotten along so well with the chickens it's unbelievable so and the, and they help put them up at night in their coops they, they've done great better than i expected so i've not noticed any chipmunks running around so that's kind of a good thing since cats have been here and our gardens are still going so no chipmunk damage anyways in the race beds guys i wanted to talk to you today about chicken breeds now i did a video before on blue black splash chicken genetics that's picked up a lot of traction. A lot of people want to know that stuff. And we did that after we got our Blue Black Splash Americanas, which unfortunately, most of those hatched. They're great, they're huge. They should start laying within the next month or so, but they're mostly roosters. So we've got that to contend with now. <laughs> That's the problem you get into if you hatch your own eggs. So. Anyways, or you know, you just don't know what you're gonna get. So that's just the look of the draw. But anyways, we got it. Um, now, if if you can see behind me, guys, we have a variety of chickens, but most of those are olive eggers, and that's what I want to talk to you today about. Olive eggers. How do you get an olive egger? What is it? And how do you breed with that? Okay, if you have chickens, guys. First step. You need to investigate all these different chicken breeds and look at colored egg layers. Look this stuff up because I'd never heard of an olive egger until I got into chickens later on. I already had these other just tan egg layers and I wanted these olive eggers. So check it out, okay? Well, Briscoe, check it out before you make a jump because you, you may end up wanting something like this. In fact, at this point, we're trying to get out of just the neutral egg layers and we want nothing but a colored rainbow egg box. So when I give someone a carton of eggs, I want it every color that I can. Um, we may have a few just neutral colored eggs, but I love the blues, the greens, the olives, the browns, the pinkish purple even. There, there is such a thing, I'm gonna show you that. Guys, it's wonderful and it's just fun. So, to get an olive egger. An olive egger is a chicken that's just a mixed breed and it will lay an olive egg and I'm gonna show you. We got our first one last week. There's no color filter on this video. These are the eggs we're getting right now. You can probably pick them out here. That is an olive egg, okay? They can be any shade of olive army green or even khaki colored. Just a weird brown, but this is a beautiful, I don't know if the video is gonna show it or not. It may, it may look more mint on the video, but guys, it's an army olive green. If I hold it back, you might can see you're up against this shirt. It's a beautiful green. It's not like, a green you would see at Easter. It's it's an army green, okay? There's all different shades of those. And when I say neutral eggs, this like a white or a cream, that's my silky eggs. Now those, I'll, I'll keep my silkies no matter what. Well, the other things that we have in here, we have Moran eggs, French black copper Moran. I'm gonna put the names up on the screen. A lot of people call these Marins. Those are a true chocolate brown egg layer. If you're wanting to breed olive eggers, you need a chocolate brown egg layer. You've got to have that. Now, you're going to see a million different colored brown eggs floating around, but you have to have something with these genetics. That's a Moran egg, okay? They come in all different shades. I have some here that are lighter than others, and they're speckled. A lot of people will tell you you won't have a speckled Moran, but you will. Speckled Moran egg. Look at this one. See all the speckles? and you hold this one up beside it, this one's a lot darker. The Moran eggs will always be a dark chocolate brown, but they're on a scale of one to 10. I believe it's one to 10, and each shade is graded on that scale. Now we've got one here. She has the weirdest bloom. A bloom is the spray over the egg, and it makes it that color, usually. This one has a purplish tint. If you can see the bottom there, she has always laid that. It's beautiful to us. And I mean, look guys, it's beautiful. So it's like a purplish tint. Now I wanna show you this one. This hen always has a lot of calcium deposits on her eggs. Each egg is different, every egg. Look at this one from a Moran. And then this one, this is the same chicken. 
see that? It's still get, it's getting a purple tint to the bottom. Okay, so that's our dark chocolate brown layers. You have to have that to get olive eggers. Now, there's several breeds you can use for this. We have the Morans. Now, it does not have to be French black copper. There's blue Morans, there's splash Morans, and there's the black Morans. So, blue, black, splash. Same genetic cycle as I did in the last video about BBS breeding, blue, black, splash. Same method. Morans have that. Americanas, Silkies. Any, anytime you have a blue, a black, and a splash, you can create and intertwine those colors and breed those back and forth to get a certain color chicken, okay? That's that's how that goes. So, any type of Moran. Now, I will say, they say the that the black Morans lay the darkest egg. I don't know if that's true. I've heard blue is second darkest and then the splash is the lightest, but it's still all a chocolate brown egg. So, you've got those. The other types of breeds you can use and I'm gonna put these up because I can't pronounce half of these, okay? Barnavelders, a lot of people have those. I have seen Billfelders used for that. I don't know. There's a Penadesca. I'm gonna put that name up there, okay? I'm gonna put all these names up so you can see. And the Wellsummers. So you have to have, though, a dark chocolate egg. You've got to. Now, the second part of this program, to breed olive eggers, you must have a true blue layer. This is where everybody gets messed up. We got messed up our first year. We got colored egg layers from somebody. They were Easter eggers. And we put those with these. Guess what they laid? They laid something comparable to that. Uh, just a cream egg. That was terrible, y'all. We had one hen that laid like a mint green egg that will not an easter egg or will not breed true with this so when you when somebody sells you something or you go out and buy from a hatchery easter eggers you cannot use those and have a dependable result to get an olive egg you cannot do that an easter egger is not going to lay this army green egg they're going to have a mint green egg you cannot do that and they are their genes have blue green white and brown all mixed together so you don't know what they're going to throw. You have to have a pure breed chicken to do this. So you need a blue layer. Now we have Americanas. That's what I did on my last video about blue black splash and we have all three of those so we can control what their offspring will look like depending on who we breed with who. Go back and look at that video. This video is to help you with olive eggs. You have to have an, either an Americana an Aracana, those are pretty rare. You're not probably gonna run up on those. And then something like a cream leg bar. Those are beautiful, they're very expensive. Americana is probably gonna be your best bet, but you need to make sure it is a pure Americana because a lot of people will change the spelling, just one letter, and that means Easter egg, okay? And they'll, and they'll sell them to you that way. It must look like an Americana. Muffs, dark legs, the whole nine yards, it has to be, and a lot of Easter eggers will have black legs. Certain traits, you have to look up, get pure Americanas. It just has to be a true blue layer. Now, there's also another breed of chicken called a whiting true blue. I believe those will work for this, but I don't know about it. So, look up true brown layers and true blue layers. And when you type in true brown layers, I did this morning to see what would come up. They were showing everything from uh, barred rocks. That will not work for this. I mean, it might, but you might get some kind of tinted egg, but you're not gonna get an army green egg, okay? They're, they're gonna show you every brown layer. Look up chocolate brown egg laying chickens, okay? That's what you need. Or just go off the breeds that I'm telling you here. And again, the names will be on the screen, okay? So, you got your, your flock, they're starting to lay. You're gonna have these, you're gonna have your blues. Now, how do you get these, the olive eggs? The, the most information you're gonna see online and what everybody's gonna tell you is you need a brown rooster, brown egg laying rooster like a Moran over a blue hen. It just so happens here on this homestead, we can't get blue egg laying hens for anything. I had Wheaton Americanas, that's what I used for this. And they're, they're beautiful chickens. They just didn't want to lay, ever. We, I think they laid maybe 10 eggs in a year and a half. Like, it was terrible. And we bought them young. We tried everything from free-ranging to it, it just didn't work out. So, we could not breed with those. 
Now we've got these Americanas, the blue black splash. Problem is we've got more roosters than hens. We still should be okay, but I had a cream leg bar rooster and I had my wheat and Americana rooster, blue egg layers. I've got tons of my Moran hens that lay these chocolate brown eggs, so I reversed it. Online, they're going to tell you brown rooster, blue hen makes the olive egger. That's true, but guys, listen to me. You can reverse it. I put the blue rooster over the brown hen, and this is what their offspring produced. I promise you, because I don't have, I didn't have a blue egg laying hen on the homestead. I didn't even have anything. So that is the result, okay? That's F1, first generation. What the hen that laid this was their offspring. You can do it either way, as long as you have pure breeds. Now, every egg that comes out of their offspring, they, they're all siblings that we've got running around here. They're all gonna lay different colored green eggs. Some may even be a khaki brown. That's just how it happens. It's, it's going to be this color though, mainly. You may have like a mint color, you may have a khaki color, but most of these are gonna be this tone. That's what this right here is with a wheat and Americana rooster over a French black copper Moran hen, okay? That's all you need. Don't listen to everything where you have to have it because I really thought that they were gonna come out like this or either a cream color. You can reverse it. So that's step one. As long as you have those two breeds, you're good. You can intertwine. Now, how am I going to get these next spring? Just say I want to hatch some. The tricky part with this is, guys, unless you keep throwing those first two back together, that's the only way you're gonna get this color. Otherwise, you're going to have to start adjusting the color each round. So this hen, if I want this egg darker, I'm gonna put her back with this rooster. That will give you a khaki egg. A, a darker green is going to cause an overlay over this actually bluish green egg. The inside of this egg is this color. The inside of this Moran egg is a white color. This is a spray on top. That's called the bloom. You can actually wash a Moran's egg under running water and it'll turn white. You'll rub off the paint. This is just spray paint in the chicken, okay? What it does is this is an actual blue egg, shell and all. This is sprayed over that to get that color. That's what happens in these genetics. So if I want a darker egg, I'm gonna put her back with this color rooster. If I want a lighter green color, like a mint, spearmint color, I'm going to put her with the blue egg laying chicken to get that diluted color. You can keep going back and forth, back and forth, but they're always going to be different shades from here on out. That's why these are so hard. You have to really have your first two groups, blue and brown, to get this over and over if you want that color. Otherwise, it's going to keep changing. What I want to do next spring is have this with the blue and have mint, have this color again, and have her with this and have the khaki. So I'm going to have all different shades of green, okay? That's what I want, and blue and browns. So it's, it's beautiful, guys, and especially, especially, I can't wait to see this egg right here. Anything speckled? Now that's gonna be on your well summers. They say those are speckled, but like this one right here, that purplish tint with that, that is going to be gorgeous. I cannot wait to see the color. So every one of these chickens are going to lay different colored green eggs. That's olive eggers, F1. Now, next year when we breed these back, the offspring, that will be F2. If you're trying to sell this stuff or you're trying to give this stuff away or whatever, you need to tell your customers what they are. That way they'll know. Because if they know about olive eggers, they know an F1 ought to look like that. An F2 probably is not going to look like that. It may have a different tint to it. You need to tell them, or F3, F4, F5, you can keep going on, but you need to keep track of this stuff. But the main point I wanted to tell you about this is you need a true chocolate brown layer, okay? You need a true blue layer. Americana cream leg bar, that's your two best bets. I would say Americana, just make sure that the spelling is right, that I just put up on the screen, that that's what you're getting and that it is from a reputable place. We, someone um, gave us some Americanas one time. I wish you could have seen them. They come here with red combs sticking straight up, no muffs, they were solid white. They were just like Cornish cross mix and they thought that those were Americanas. They said, well, we were told they were. No, they were not. You need to, you need to know 
what the chickens look like, okay? You need to know these characteristics. And all these pure breeds will always look this way no matter what. There won't be any variation in how they look. They will be the same thing over and over. So you won't get, you know, ripped off in the long run, okay? That's that's the main thing. Um, ear lobes play a factor in this. And I wanna show you one last thing about these genetics, especially with the blue. Our silkies have the brightest blue earlobes. They're beautiful, but they don't lay blue eggs. A lot of people say that you can go off the earlobes. Our olive eggers have a blue sheen to their earlobes. They have blue genes, okay? Genetically. Our, um, we've got starlight green eggers that we got from Tractor Supply. If you see a big white rooster behind me or an orange one, that's what they are. Now, do you see that Polish hen right there, right behind me with a big top knot? I want you to see her egg. She is a cross. She's a Tolbent Polish. Her mother was a Tolbent Polish. She um, got attacked by a possum the very first week she started laying. That was her very first egg. <laughs> I just threw it in the incubator. And in that pen, there was a cream leg bar rooster and a Tolbent Polish rooster. She's not pure. She's a mix with the cream leg bar. Cream leg bar is pure. It has two blue genes, a pure blue layer. Tolbent Polish is a white egg laying Polish chicken. She's a mix. She has blue ears. Her brothers that we have here have blue ears. There's a pretty good chance she's gonna lay a blue egg. I want you to see, she just started laying this week. This is her egg. It's, it's cream colored, just like a Tolbent Polish. The blue didn't pick up. I don't know why. A lot of times this stuff just doesn't happen right. From what the internet will tell you and from what genetics will tell you is it is supposed to be a very pale blue egg. It is not, it's not. So I don't know how, how that happened, but as far as I can figure, it should have been blue. It, it really should have been. But I've seen her on the nest. She's been in there cackling. Um, every nest I've seen her in, there's this egg and this egg is brand new to my big coop here where she stays. So 99% sure that's her. Um, I mean, she'll get up and I'll run down to the coop and check. I'll see her come out of the pen and just, just to see, cause I want to see that blue egg and I wanted to use it to breed with, but you know, in, in the colored egg program, but it didn't happen. It was a cream egg. So you have to be careful with this. Anytime something is crossed with these breeds, you never know what you're going to get, just like the olive eggers. But guys, I wish the camera could pick it up because this, it, they're beautiful up here. I'm telling you, these are, these are gorgeous. And when you have nothing but these eggs lined up, all these colored eggs, I mean, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. And if you're trying to sell your eggs, you're gonna bring more money because these are different breeds. These are prettier eggs, okay? It, it doesn't make a difference as far as the taste, but people, if you're trying to market yourself and get into the egg business, chicken business, you want something different that no one else has. There's not a person around us that has these things. So that's good for us. That's really good. Um, you know, you can, get, you can get this from Dollar General to Walmart to wherever, that egg but you can't bounce up in there and get that. <laughs> so always set yourself apart, be a little bit different if you're trying to sell this kind of stuff. But guys, it's just what I like. I don't care. I just like it and I think it's beautiful. So country life doesn't have to be all about mud and muck. It can be pretty too. Guys, Olive Egger Genetics 101. We'll let you know the more that we get these. I can't wait to see this whole basket full of green. They should start laying any day now. So follow along. We'll see you next time on Harmon Homestead. <laughs>